The brand new Animal Friends of Pika Pow 3 book is out and it is full of the cutest crocheted toy patterns. And today we're going to talk about my best tips for crocheting amigurumi, but especially the Animal Friends of Pika Pow toys. Hi, I'm Elise from the blog LePetitSaintCrochet.com. I'm a huge fan of Jan Schenkel, who is the designer behind all things Animal Friends of Pika Pow, ever since I saw Victor Frog on the cover of her 2017 book. From that moment forward, I fell head over heels in love with Amigurumi, and I have made many of the characters from her first and second Animal Friends of Pika Pow books. I'm going to try not to be super excited throughout this entire video, but I have to say that all things Animal Friends of Pika Pow make me so happy and I am so excited to finally have my very own copy of this book and it is full of 20 gorgeous, adorable patterns full of the cutest personalities. You'll find Lucas Red Fox, Gilbert Rabbit, Olivia Rosemary Mouse, Horatio Polar Bear, Ron Red Panda, Angus Squirrel, Humboldt Penguin, Tina Lemur, Ramona Cow, Peggy Hippopotamus, Mabel Hedgehog, Indiana Moth, Alberto Seagull, Astrid Ostrich, Greta Hen, Cosmo Snail, Angelica Whale, Roberto Dachshund, Amelia Giraffe, Eduardo Cutosaurus. And what's really great is that each one of the patterns has a star rating system. So the easiest patterns are rated one star and the more difficult patterns are rated three stars. Let's jump right into my best tips for crocheting the toys from Animal Friends of Pika Pow. Now, some of these tips actually come from the book and I don't want you to miss them because the beginning of her books are really great tutorials and she does a lot of explaining about why her toys look the way they do and I'm going to highlight some of those tips. And then I'm going to share some of my best tips for crocheting toys that I've developed over the years of crocheting these adorable toys. I've made dozens of them and trust me, I've learned a lot. One of the biggest differences that you're going to find about the Animal Friends of Pika Pow patterns is that Jan Schenkel uses yarn under rather than yarn over for her amigurumi toys. And if you aren't familiar with what yarn under and yarn over are, I'm not going to demonstrate it here because I have a full video all about it, which I will link to in the description box below. But we will go over the basics. Yarn under creates an X-shaped stitch, whereas yarn over creates a V-shaped stitch. Now, most of us learn how to yarn over when we are learning how to crochet. So yarn under is a little bit different of a technique. The stitch is more compact because you twist the yarn when you make that first yarn under. Your result will be a tighter and smaller stitch and thus a more compact toy. Jan also goes on to explain that when you do the yarn under method, your toys are going to be a little longer than they are wide and they're going to be a little less squishy. She even went on to show a test making a circle with yarn under and one using yarn over. The circle with yarn over measured four inches, but the circle made by using yarn under measured 3.3 inches. That is a significant difference when you think about how small that little circle actually was. I typically make all of my toys with yarn over. It's just the technique that I prefer, but I did crochet Philip the lobster with yarn under and it is a very different technique. So if you ever get a chance to look at yarn under and yarn over side by side, there really is a difference. I would encourage you to experiment with yarn over and yarn under. And some people are surprised when they find out that they actually do a combination of the two. That's what I found in my comment section of my yarn over versus yarn under video that a lot of people were surprised that they were actually doing a combination of the two stitches, which will result in a different looking stitch. But when you look at yarn under, you really do see that it is a compact little tiny toy, whereas yarn over is going to be a little bit bigger. And I think it's really great to experiment with that and find out which one works best for you. Ultimately, I found yarn under to be very hard on my wrists because you're using less yarn. You are really making tight little stitches, which is great when you don't want any stuffing to show through. But for me, it just didn't work. But I'm really glad that I tested it out to see which one was best for me. My next tip is about color changes. And Jan goes on to explain in the book the differences between yarn under and yarn 
yarn over even when it comes to changing colors. There's also quite a difference when making color changes. The X shape is much like a square, like a pixel, and sometimes these stitches seem to align better. You'll also see on page 24 that she took a series of photos comparing two penguins that she made, one using yarn over and one using yarn under, and she's specifically showing how the stripes look different. When you yarn over, your stitches lean a little more to the right or left, depending on if you're right or left hand but with X-shaped stitches, they stack on top of each other just a little bit more than they do with yarn over. And that seems to create neater stripes if that's something that's really important to you. My next tip is about yarn weight and crochet hook combination. There's a general rule with Amigurumi that you always go down two crochet hook sizes from the recommended hook from the yarn label. So if you find a skein of yarn and on the label it recommends a size five millimeter crochet hook, you would subtract two from that and you would use a three millimeter hook for your crocheted toy. But Jan has found a combination that works best for her regardless of her yarn choice. But there's always one combo of yarn and hook that works best. And in my case, this is worsted weight yarn with a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. She goes on to explain that earlier in her designing career, she was really experimenting with her tension and she was trying to crochet tighter and tighter so that there would be no holes for stuffing to show. But she started to experience hand pain. And at that time, she was a crocheted toy seller. She sold her finished toys and crocheting that many hours a day made her hands ache terribly. So she decided rather than continue to tighten up those stitches, she was going to go down in crochet hook size. And that's how she found her perfect combination of worsted weight yarn and a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. One of my best tips and one that I saw in the book was your crochet hook material. You want a crochet hook that slides easily in and out of your tight little single crochet stitches for amigurumi. And the only one that I have found that works really well is metal. I've tried wood, I've tried plastic, and they both have a lot of drag. And I recommend finding a strong metal crochet hook because you're going to be using a lot of this kind of motion and sometimes they can easily break if the metal isn't strong enough. And I've always recommended the Furls Odyssey crochet hooks, but unfortunately, every time I go to look at them, they're all sold out. So I'm not really sure if they're even selling them anymore. But my new recommendation, and one that I like equally as much, is the Clover Amour crochet hooks. They are wonderful and they're very strong. My next tip is all about safety eyes. There are so many different types of safety eyes online that it's hard to find ones that are good quality and at a good price. I have found two places that I recommend people buy safety eyes from, and that's Glass Eyes Online and 6060 Eyes. Both of these companies have a wide range of quality safety eyes to choose from. The biggest difference is in the backs of these eyes. The Glass Eyes Online have flat plastic backs for their safety eyes, and I find them just a little bit easier to put on. The 6060 eyes are also very good safety eyes, and they have a metal back, and I have found that it's a little bit more difficult for me to add those to my Amigurumi toys. No matter which safety eye I'm going to use, I have found that this safety safety eye tool has been a lifesaver for me. It makes putting on the backs of safety eyes so much simpler. I found this little tool on Amazon and it is fairly inexpensive and I will link it in the description box below. The last time I recommended it, it actually sold out pretty quickly, but it's well worth the wait. It actually works so wonderful and my hands are no longer sore from trying to put those backs on. Let's talk a little bit about stuffing. There are two main types of stuffing that I use. One is polyfill and that's the one that we're most familiar with. It comes in the big pack and the stuffing is all one big ball and you just pull out little pieces and stuff into the toy. The other type that I've been experimenting with is called Morning Glory Cluster Stuff and it's actually little clusters of fiber fill and it just creates a little bit softer toy. But a lot of people ask questions about stuff 
stuffing and really it's not the problem that they think it is. You want to stuff your toy firmly enough that it creates that shape and it fills in the toy. But a lot of times people think that the stuffing is the problem and actually what the problem is are the stitches. If you can see your stuffing when you're looking at your toy, it's not the stuffing's fault, it's your stitches. It means that you need to go down in a crochet hook size because you shouldn't be able to see your stuffing. And I'm going to show you a difference here in some of the toys that I've made. This is the third Amigurumi toy that I ever made and it's Harry Wolf and he's from Animal Friends Peak Pal 1. And I want you to look closely. You can see all of the stuffing with this little guy. It's because my crochet hook and my yarn were not a good combination and we talked about that earlier but I'm going to show you what it looks like when you actually have the right combination of yarn and hook. Now this is James Duck from Animal Friends of Pika Pow 2 and you'll notice that you can't see any of the stuffing because I had the proper combination of crochet hook and yarn. Make sure not to overthink stuffing. Stuffing is just stuffing and you just put it in your toy and make sure that there's enough in there to keep the shape of the toy. But if you see your stuffing through your toy, that means that your combination of hook and yarn are incorrect. Now let's talk a little bit about this wonderful book and some of the things that I think are really unique about it. What's really great about this book is that there is a QR code at the beginning of each and every one of the patterns. When you take your smartphone and go to your camera and put it up to the QR code, you will see a little website pop up, amigurumi.com. And when you click on that, it's going to take you to a gallery full of people who have made that exact pattern. And what's great about that is that you can look at how they made their toy, but also some of the different color combinations. And that's really fun to give you ideas and to get inspiration for how you could possibly make your toy. Another interesting thing about this book is that Jan has reworked some of the patterns from her original book that came out in 2015. That book, El Mundo de Picapau, was never published in English, but she's taken a few of those original patterns and she's updated them and they are in the Animal Friends of Pika Pau 3 book. The first is Lucas Red Fox, and he was on the cover of El Mundo de Pika Pau. You can see that it's still the same toy, but it's definitely updated. The next is Amelia Giraffe. Outside of the color differences, I really can't tell any difference between her original pattern and the one in the Animal Friends of Pika Pau 3 book. And I really don't think that there was anything she could have improved upon because she is so adorable. And finally is Humboldt Penguin. And I think the only updating that she did with this pattern was to add that little adorable cape. I think it's really interesting to look back and see those designs from 2015 and look at her current designs to see the evolution of Jan as an Amigurumi designer. What I've always found so incredible about Jan's designs is that she can take something that is fairly simple and give it so much personality and make it so whimsical. And I think that's what makes a truly gifted Amigurumi designer. There are so many adorable patterns in this book, but I want to share a few of my favorites. The first is Peggy Hippopotamus. I am in love with her little bobble edged cardigan and her duck blue leggings and she has the sweetest expression on her little face. Greta Hen is possibly my favorite pattern in this entire book. Look at those oversized feet and her little striped tail feathers. And I've never seen a hen wearing a shawl before, but now I think they all need one. How cute. And the last one is Cosmo Snail. Wow. This little guy stole my heart from the moment that I saw the cover of this new book. He has the cutest little smile and I love the combination of aqua and mustard yellow. And the little spiral shell on his back looks like a perfectly sliced lemon. How adorable. I thought it would be fun to go back and look at all of the different animal friends of Pika Pal patterns that I have made over the years. The first is Victor Frog and I've made Victor Frog more times than I can count. I've made him in the traditional way, but I also transitioned to making him a her and putting a tutu on her. You can find the tutorial for that tutu in the description box below. And I still have have my original Victor Frog that I made, but I gave away and sold all of the rest. Harry Wolf. This was the next Pika Pow toy I made. I still have my original one, but I made him several times as well. He stretched my skills in many ways, and I credit him with learning so much about Amigurumi and the importance of getting the facial symmetry right. Robin Unicorn. 
The unicorn is a project that I only made twice. I found the way the underside of the body to be very challenging, but I learned so much. Hans Grizzly Bear. I enjoyed making this little bear so much and made him several times. I learned something new and my skills improved each time that I made him. Lola Panda. I only made this pattern once and this is when I began to learn about crocheted color work and how difficult it is to use black yarn. Pedro Von Dito Pig. This became one of my favorite projects ever. I enjoyed making this little pig so much and continued to make him and also making a girl version with a tutu as well. I so wish that I had kept one of these little guys and gals for myself. Bonnie Puffin. Another favorite of mine is Bonnie. This was a big challenge for me, but boy, did I learn a lot from this pattern. I also made her a few more times and enjoyed each opportunity to improve my skills. One of the biggest lessons I learned was the importance of making sure there was enough contrast in the color work sections around the neck. In the first puffin, I used a light yellow and I felt like you could barely see all the work that I had done to make that section. I fixed that mistake the next time that I made her. Gertrude Dragon. I only made this girl one time. It was the biggest amigurumi project I had ever made at that point, and all those little spikes up and down her back were a challenge. Murray Sea Otter. This was such a fun project and found him fairly simple as I had learned so much from amigurumi by this point. I even went on to make it a little girl as well and put a little bow up on her head. Marsha Alpaca. This was one of my favorite projects, and I also learned how to make pom-poms for the first time. How cute is this pattern? Pattern. Marcos Kawadi. I really loved making this pattern because I was able to put a lot of the skills together that I had learned and I think he turned out really cute. Rosa Cheetah. I loved making this little girl. This was when I began to be really interested in clothing for Amigurumi toys and I loved making her little dress. Renee Yakare Kamen. Oh, how I love this pattern. I made him several times and eventually turned him into a little girl with a tutu as well. Hector Rhinoceros. This was one of my favorite projects as well, so much so that I ended up keeping her. I love the colors I chose for this project in those baby pastels. So cute. James Duck. This was one of the only toys that I made from Animal Friends Pika Pow 2. Her designs had evolved so much from the first and second books, and I was so impressed with her growing design skills. I think James Duck is absolutely adorable. Philip Lobster is one of my favorite Pika Pow toys of all times. I love this adorable adorable pattern, that cute little smile, and his little striped shirt. In total, I've crocheted 16 of the Animal Friends of Pika Pow patterns, and many of them I made more than once. I really do credit Jan Schenkel for teaching me how to make amigurumi. I hope you enjoyed today's video all about Animal Friends of Pika Pow, and let me know in the description box below if you have ever made any of these toys, and how many of them have you made. I have heard that some people have made every single one of the designs, and I think that that is so much fun. Also, let me know which one is your favorite from her new book. And I hope you all stay safe out there and happy stitching.